we start a presentation at Railroad University, it's very important for us to acknowledge the land that we're on. So Railroad University is on the traditional land of the Kasapsan and Lekwagen families and uh, indigenous nation, also known as the Sunhi and Esquimal. So it's with deep gratitude that we work, play, learn here on those lands and where the past, present and future of indigenous and non-indigenous student, faculty and staff come together. And before we start uh, talking a little bit more uh, about the program and about Railroad University, I just have a little poll for he you here, just to get to know you. So if you don't mind answering those little two questions, that will help me and Mickey here to answer any question or maybe to orientate the presentation a little bit. Not sure, can you see the, the poll, Mickey? I think some people might be shy. Perfect. Oh, many people from students, worker. Fantastic. So I'm asking, what is your current situation? We have a few people that are students at the college level, some workers not working or studying. And the main reason is mostly to learn about the program, the program outcomes, which is quite important, and the admission detail. Fantastic. So I'm just looking, I know that four people answer, if the rest can answer, I'll just leave it a few more seconds here. And today with us in the chat, we have Andrea from the Enrollment Services. So she will post some links as we go through the session together, and then I'll make sure to share those links with you uh, with the recording. So thank you everyone for participating in the poll. I'll make sure to share the result as well. So just making sure everybody's in the good room today, we're here to talk about the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science. And I have Dr. Miki Nobel with me. Hi, Miki. Morning, everybody. And Miki is the program head of the program of this bachelor, and she knows a lot about the program. So I'm very uh, happy and pleased that she can join me on this webinar. And my name is Nancy Prévost-Maurice. I'm an education specialist here at Railroads. And I work a lot with Miki and with the School of Environment and Sustainability to uh, promote the programs and answer any questions that prospect might have. So this is the agenda for today. Quick review. And I'd like to take a few minutes to uh, just introduce you to Railroads University. And maybe you can use your reaction button to just raise your hand or, or tell me with a heart or a thumbs up if you came to Railroads before. Depending, I know we have people joining from everywhere in Canada and the world today. Uh, we had over 50 people register, which is very exciting. Um, so yeah, maybe you came to campus before. On the top left here, you can see Hatley Castle, which is the most famous uh, building on campus, was built in 1908 as a, a retirement house. Uh, and now we have classroom in there, events, uh, beautiful view, of course. We also have Japanese garden on the top right. So we have 65 acres of land at Railroad. So you will go with your, with your cohort sometime with your school wandering around, but you can as well come as a tourist, as a visitor, and enjoy all those beautiful gardens. Esquimalt Lagoon at the bottom left, uh, this is the, the campus will be facing this lagoon. Uh, it's a bird sanctuary, so very peaceful, very unique, I would say, uh, in BC and Canada. And at the bottom right, online learning for 25 years. So if you didn't know, Royal Roads is a little bit more than 25 years now, and we were built uh, to be fully online. So we have a few uh, models that we will explain to you, but really it's not something we started doing over the past years. We have always been keen to uh, provide online experience for all our students uh, across the world. And maybe you're asking yourself, why explore Royal Road University? I know that you have a lot of uh, options when you're looking for an institution. And why explore Royal Road? So we see life as a qualification. Really throughout the admission process, we want to get to know you. So everything you have done in the past counts at Royal Road. So volunteering, work experience, uh, other institution you study at, we take it kind of as a holistic approach to uh, admit you into the program. The second bullet is prof who know your name. Very important. We have small cohort, most of the time about 30, 35 people for most of the programs. So you will get to know your profs really well. You will get to know your colleagues as well. And those profs will kind of learn with you and help you building the career that you want. 
learning based on life, again, you can bring what you work on. So if I know many people say they're workers, so what you experience in your real life, you will bring that kind of real life experience into the classroom to discuss online or on campus with your cohort. So it's really bringing theory and practice together. Connection for life. I hear many people saying that after the program at Royal Roads, they stay connected, they still see each other. Some graduates will uh, employ some of our students and, and new graduates. So there's really a beautiful network uh, of graduates that happen at Royal Roads. And again, as I mentioned, we were built differently. So we always wanted people we, we kind of created the programs and Royal Road was created for working professionals. So we get it if you want to work and study uh, or if you're already working and you just want to level up your career, we're here to help. And before I pass it over to Miki, we're a change maker campus. So there's only a few uh, institutions in Canada that has this beautiful like it's accreditation, Ashoka U, and it's all about innovation, leadership uh, and ent entrepreneurship. So I invite you to maybe Google Changemaker Campus or visit our website to learn more. And as we move forward, Mickey, if you want to take it on, and I forgot to ask people, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat as well. So if you want to let us know your name, where you're joining from, the indigenous land you're, you're from, I'll have a look in, in the chat. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mickey Noble, and I'm the program head for the BSc of Environmental Science program here at Royal Roads University. Um, I have been the program head uh, for the better part of the last 10 years, um, and I've been teaching in the program since it began in 1995. So, uh, next slide, I think. Yeah. Would you like that I play this, the video of the lab? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Come see our lab. Our labs are real, are, are new, and I'm very pleased with them. Yeah, and I can have the volume down, Mickey, if you have anything to add during the video. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Royal Roads University. This is the Sherwin Gent building, and this is where our science labs are. So this building was originally built over 105 years ago for the Dunsmeres as one of their stables, and then more recently for the military college. Oh, sorry for that. It was turned into the Muse building. Uh, Royal Roads University also used it as the Muse building for a number of years. And then in the last few years, a full renovation was completed as well as an addition, which the science labs are on this side with the addition. And on this other side is the original building. So welcome to the Sherman Gen building. This building's where your classes would occur for the BSc program. Welcome to one of our teaching labs. So this teaching lab is used for our biology and our microbiology labs. So we've got the setup for all of the students on the benches. So we've got a nice big window so you have a bit of a view and some natural light while you're in here. And then on this other side we've got some gene bags. Off of the teaching lab we have a lab support room. This has our minus 86 freezer a regular freezer, a fridge, and two incubators. So anytime that you are bringing in any samples for your biology or microbiology labs, this is where they will go. One of the nice parts about having so much uh, land around the university is the ability for so you guys to go out and get samples for various off. experiments. It's the glass more storage. So we pretty much always have everything you need out to complete the labs, but if you ever needed something extra, you'll probably find it in this well-organized storage room.
So the next lab is the prep lab. So this is the prep lab. This is where I get all of your stuff ready for all of your labs. So I spend quite a bit of time in here. So in here, we've got an autoclave, the dishwashers. We've also got a distilled water machine, some biosafety cabinets. Have a look around. I think I'll stop it here, Mickey, but I'll yep. make sure to share the link. So the lesson. Uh, this is someone you work with closely, I think, huh? that was introduced yeah, in the lab. Um, yeah, the, the, that particular video is hosted by Sharon McMillan. She's our uh, assistant lab instructor here at Royal Roads. And yes, uh, any students in the program will work extensively with both myself and Sharon. All right. Um, so we have uh, two different blended, uh, two different possibilities for ways you can take your program. So we have uh, what we describe as the blended option, meaning that most of the year you'll study at distance, um, but there will be part of the year uh, where you will come to campus and you will do lab and field work. Um, and then the other option is the fully online program. So that will allow you to come to campus and you will, um, essentially spend uh, an entire calendar year with us. So it starts in September and finishes at the end of August uh, and will allow you to get all of your school stuff done uh, in the one year. Okay, so as I just mentioned, our on-campus version is intensive. So this is essentially year three and year four in one calendar year. Um, there are breaks of approximately a week between each term. So during those weeks, we encourage you to go off and do the things that, that you need to do to regenerate yourself, whether that's camping or getting together with friends and family. Uh, the blended version tends to appeal to those folks that have um, more the house, the spouse, the kids, or the um, ties to the community in such a way that coming to Victoria for a year is just not an option for you. For those folks, um, you'll have three three-week periods on campus at Royal Roads where we'll do your lab and your field uh, components of the program. Um, and then the rest of the year you'll study uh, at distance. So this is designed to allow folks that are working full-time to uh, also complete their studies. And this takes place over two calendar years, um, basically, two years plus three weeks. Okay, so for on-campus, uh, our on-campus program starts in September. Um, our first couple of weeks are actually online and we give you a few small things to do. So we miss um, an introduction to academic integrity. Those two things shouldn't take you all that long. It's just kind of a way to get your feet wet and uh, get an idea of, of expectations. Then you'll arrive on campus and you'll have a couple of weeks of orientation activities um, just to kind of get you guys ready to go. And then first quarter starts in earnest and, and runs from October till to, to December. Um, then you have break for Christmas. January to March is your second, uh, second quarter. Um, end of March to May is third and then uh, June to the end of August to finish up the program. So busy but uh you'll get a lot done great mickey uh, already someone is asking me a question how many hours does that mean per week when you're on um, campus you are scheduled to be in class uh 8 30 to 4 30 you should expect that outside of that uh you will have homework you may have meetings with teams and and other things that are occurring outside of that timetable Uh, for the blended program, of course, this runs a little bit differently. So again, you'll have that introduction to academic integrity that will happen um, towards the beginning of April, beginning, middle of April. Um, then you'll arrive for your first residency and you'll be here for three weeks and it will include orientation activities and labs and running around campus to get samples and all kinds of good things like that. Um, then you'll go home for your first distance uh, period. So you'll be taking generally one, sometimes two courses at a time. Um, and that will occur 
throughout the year uh, with a break for Christmas. Um, you will have a resident, second residency that will again be on campus and include all kinds of lab and field things. And then a second distance period that will run the entire next year. And then a final residency that will kind of cap everything off. And then you're done and ready to launch out into the world. And Miki, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think residencies are quite part of the signature of Royal Road, right? Students really like that. They very much are. And because you're going to be studying at distance, those residencies are really, really important. They let you get, uh, get to know your colleagues. And honestly, it's so much easier to work with people online once you've already met and worked with them in person. Um, because you kind of know who everybody is and what they're all about a little bit, um, which makes the online experience so much better. Uh, the online portions are not self-paced. Uh, you're you'd still be doing teamwork online with, with your colleagues and lots of discussions and, and things where you're working together as well as, um, as individually, but you'll be marching along with your cohort, which really lets you have those social interactions to support your learning. Okay, so what do these include? Um, basically, the, both... The blended version and the on-campus version are almost exactly the same. Uh, both include all kinds of natural science courses. So atmospheric and oceanic sciences, ecotox, chemistry, microbiology, geotech. Um, you'll be doing some sustainability cl classes, some things about policy. So economics, law, land use, planning, um, management tools, statistics, communications. We've got actually a really cool communications course. Um, this is not, you know, how to write your resume. This is, has been specifically designed by a colleague who's very much interested in how science is communicated out to the public. And so she'll be talking about things like um, how to judge your web presence, how to know your audience, what, what constitutes a good blog post, things that you are likely to be doing when you go out to start to work. Um, and then for the on-campus program, uh, there is a nine-month major project, uh, which is self, uh, self-directed team-based project for an external sponsor. And so we've had projects from sponsors like Mary's Lake Stewardship Society that we're looking at uh, baseline functions of environment. Um, last year's class had a, a group that was generating a, a microplastics testing protocol for Capital Regional District, um, as well as one that was doing biodiversity mapping on campus. So those projects can be uh, a lot of different things, and they're really a great way to get some hands-on experience before you go out to work and finish your degree. For the um, distance group, while they don't have those kinds of uh, projects, they do have two more management oriented courses. So they have public policy formulation. Um, and I can't remember what the other one is offhand. Ah, tools for business decision making. There we go. Um, which will again allow you to that uh, ability to enhance your management skills. Both programs are very much about teaching you the generalist knowledge that you're going to need to span people that have expertise in all these different disciplines and bring them together. Okay, how do you get into the program? Which is always the $20,000 question at this point. Um, many programs have transfer agreements with us. Um, there are over 80 different transfer agreements from across Canada that will um, give you admission to the program. Having said that, just because your program is not on the accreditation uh, transfer agreement list does not mean that you do not qualify. So we are looking for um, two years of post-secondary, okay? So 60 credits, uh, 24 of those need to be at the second year level. And we are looking for two courses in chemistry, two in biology, two in math or physics, one of which can be a statistics course and two courses in writing or communications. Now that writing and communications is pretty general. So, you know, most, kinds of English classes, communications classes, many humanities classes uh, will qualify uh, to meet those uh, prerequisites. But, um, and again, looking for that 3.0 grade point average, 
in. If that doesn't, if you didn't quite make that, don't fret. We have roots in for you too. Uh, okay, we'll talk about flexible assessment in a second for those who don't quite make, make the 3.0. Um, professional certifications. Um, Eco Canada does the environmental professional in training designation, which is the currently the only re uh, recognized national certification for environmental professionals uh, in Canada. This program is certified through that, uh, which means that you get some time off your work experience needed to convert your environmental professional and training certification to your full certification. Um, and I believe that our certification for the program also um, knocks off the assessment fee uh, at the beginning. So this can be really uh, a useful part of your program. Very good to know. Thank you, Miki. Yeah, and Eco Canada did, just did a, a big conference last week that I was uh, happy to, to join. And so many graduates from your program were there. Uh, so many EPT, as we call them, and EPs. And most people were um, most people were sharing the same experience and, and thoughts about how important their education was to work where to kind of bring them where they are right now. And they keep saying that how Eco Canada can kind of create that network. Uh, when they leave school to stay connected and, and continue building uh, kind of a better world all together. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. And Eco Canada, I'll make sure to share the link with people if you cannot click on the slides here. Another $20,000 question, Mickey. <laughs> uh, what do our students do? Um, lots of stuff. Um, so these are some examples of some of the major projects that have happened in the last couple of years. Um, so I've already talked a little bit about the biodiversity project. Uh, Healing City Soils uh, is a big uh, garden soil and mapping uh, project that is a, a looking at ways for local residents to get their garden soil tested to answer the question of whether there are unacceptable levels of metals in their garden soil and what impact that might have um, on their ability to, for instance, uh, have vegetable gardens. Uh, we had a project looking at what would be needed to reestablish ind indigenous shellfish on the Coburg Peninsula, which is a, a small strip of land uh, out in front of the university that separates the Squamalt Lagoon from the ocean. Uh, and another group that um, generated uh, a bear safe waste management strategy for the District of Souk. So those major projects really can involve a lot of different things. Um, you will be assigned a team and one of the first things you will do as part of that process is actually bid on the projects for that given year and tell me all about why you think your group should get a given project uh, and then I sit down and, and assign teams to each project and and uh, off everybody goes so um, really great way to get some some practical experience especially if you're just changing fields Uh, what do our grads do? Um, well, that really depends on what you want to do. Um, at one point, the university's kind of catchphrase was, you can get there from here. Um, yeah, you really kind of can. So my students go into all kinds of things. They're environmental consultants and managers, environmental coordinators, research assistants, policymakers. Uh, I've got one or two that are now assistant deputy ministers for different things environmental officers for all kinds of NGOs, um, a dozen or so that went on to get teaching certificates to have environment as their teaching area to teach school. Um, quite a few environmental lawyers at this point, uh, a couple of doctors. So yeah, it, it really is a question of what do you see yourself doing next? Because um, there's an awful lot of possibilities and it doesn't all have to be about environmental consulting. And some of those folks show up as, as environmental people in places you might not expect, like large hotels or uh, other things like that. So there really is lots of options. Uh, employers love our grads. Um, folks from our program are good communicators. You know lots about teamwork. You have background information in all kinds of different disciplines. 
and a real ability to sit back and, and connect the dots. So it makes for uh, a really good relationship with employers. Uh, the other advantage is the program's been around for 25 years. So employers are familiar with it. They know what's, what's involved and what kind of grads uh, that they're going to get out of it. Um, I've got a bit of a running joke that I have a few, uh, a few departments in uh, some cities where it's like there's an awful lot of our grads in some cities that work for their environmental department and so it's a bit of a running joke right we're taking over the entire department one person at a time so yeah there's there's a lot of really good marketable skills that that you'll learn as part of this program Um, okay, so studying abroad, um, not something that is easily incorporated into your program, but there are definitely possibilities that this is something that you're interested in as something that you could add on to the end of your program. So when you finish your, your program at the end of August, uh, there are opportunities for you to do uh, a study abroad with partner universities in Japan, in Chile. Uh, I believe Germany has a couple that are set up uh, as well. So, you know, if that's something that, in, that interests you as a next step, it's definitely something that, that you could uh, make happen. Wonderful, yeah, and their email is go.global. If you have any question about that, they're always uh, happy to answer any question you might have. And I'm just looking, so before I jump in into the admission process, if any of you has questions, please just enter them in the chat. I see that Andrea has been posting a lot of links, which is amazing. But maybe if you have anything specific right now, you can use the chat and Mickey and I will keep an eye for it. Um, so now that you're getting excited, I see many people uh, already in college looking to pursue with us for year three and four uh, for a bachelor. So that's fantastic. Um, as Miki mentioned, so the standard admission, so we have two types of admission at railroads, which is pretty exciting. So we have the standard and the flexible admission. Standard would be a completion, as you can see, of an approved transfer program with a minimum of B. And sometimes, uh, Miki, correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes the transfer agreement, transfer program, I see it as the work has been done before we apply. So Miki and the people at different institutions, you mentioned 80 of them, will review uh, kind of course by course what it is. And it's kind of almost like a block transfer that you'll do. So if you have the B, uh, the B average, and then you have all those courses, you're kind of automatically in into uh, our B, BSc. So it's pretty neat. It's kind of it's, saves. It's pretty, yes, it's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, if you look up your program, it will tell you, you know, your diploma program is your straight admission. In other cases, it may be your diploma program plus a course in math or plus a course in chemistry. So there's, there's lots of options. Um, and if you ever look at that and you think, I have no idea what that <laughs> means or how to work it out, shoot an email over to Andrea and company and they will definitely be able to search out. Exactly. And if you don't have a transfer agreement, no problem. If you have uh, the prerequisite courses that we mentioned earlier with, again, that average B, and you have a minimum of 24 second year credits uh, from a recognized post-secondary institution, you can be in as part of that standard admission. But again, maybe you're, that's not you and that's all good because we have flexible admission. And just remember that flexible admission is not something you need to check when you apply at Railroads. You will apply, you will send us your transcript, and then we'll be able to let you know if you need to supply more documents and you will be assessed through flexible admission instead of standard. So don't worry about that. But flexible admission, we created it because we want uh, our cohorts to be diverse. We want a lot of people to be able to join our programs. So if you don't meet the standard admission, uh, you will still need those prerequisite courses with a minimum of B, but then we will base our assessment uh, based on your experience. So when you will supply your letter of uh, statement, letter of intention, sorry, you will explain to us and you will send your resume as well to let us know what type of work you have done, other studies maybe, and a volunteer experience as well. And we assess here on a case-by-case -case basis. So as, as soon as you're ready to apply, you'll go online. That's my next slide. 
and you will apply online and we will review your um, your kind of application as we go. So we don't wait until the final deadline date as other institutions will do. We really do it on a daily basis. And you can ask us, I, I see that Andrea posted about the pathways. So we have so many transfer agreements and we have a full section on the website if you want to have a look. Again, just for uh, the ease of you applying to Railroad and not having to, to make that process more complicated than it needs to be. Um, the other thing about flexible admission yeah. is one of the one of the documents you may be asked for is is a statement of intent, right? So this is why do I want to be in the program, right? So tell us about you, right? Um, that statement of intent is also a great place to you know if you didn't make the the B average and there were extenuating circumstances, it's a place to explain that, right? Um, you know, so don't forget to to tell us about those things. Um, detailed resume really does mean detailed resume. It, it's not confined to two pages. So tell us what you volunteered at and what, what other experiences you have that we should take into account. Um, if you served in the Canadian Armed Forces, send us your training record. Sometimes relevant stuff is hidden in, in your training record that's not obvious from whatever your job title in the, in the forces was. Fantastic. Yeah, that's exactly it. And we have more guidelines about it on the website. So feel free to browse the website and go to the program. On the left, you'll have a panel with many uh, kind of more, yeah, more information for you to complete the resume, the statement, and the two letters of reference. Uh, but again, maybe if you're coming with um, the standard admission, you'll just need to submit your official transcript. And the transcript, you'll ask your institution uh, to send it directly to our team, uh, to the admission team. And before we do all that, you simply go to railroads.ca, you click on apply, and then you'll select your program, pay a fee of $131.39, and then you'll see the next step. And if you're looking, let's see for the next intake here, I see that someone had a question about dates. So here are the next intake. We have one coming up, uh, the next blended one will be in April with the deadline of February 17. So if you think that you're ready to jump into this one, as soon as your application, that online application is received by February 17, then you have a little delay to submit your documents. So you need to, to do the application for sure before that date. If you don't get into that intake, you can wait until the 2024 one. And if you're looking to come on campus uh, after maybe uh, your degree that you're achieving right now, or you're thinking of, of maybe wanting more like an in-person education, then you can apply already for September 5th, 2023. I can't believe we're already in 2023, actually. <laughs> and coming back here, someone is asking me about the letters of reference. Sorry, Mickey, if you mentioned it, I'm not sure, but no. letter of reference, yeah, we ask sometimes for one academic, one professional letters. Uh, it's an ideal world if you can find someone from another institution and then someone you work with, but I think that can be flexible as well, as long as it's not your parents or a good friend of you, because we need to know kind of to get an external uh, view on your application. And here we go. And services available to you. Uh, you just met in the chat our amazing enrollment services uh, team. And you can always connect with them at that simple email, learn.more at railroads.ca. You can call them. You can even book a Zoom call with them uh, if you want to really uh, deepen your knowledge of the program and what you need to get in. And as well, we know that going back to school or continuous your, continuing your education the, the finance part is a huge component. So if you're looking for loans, grants, uh, any funding, please visit the website at Trail Road, the financial aid and awards. And again, you can book an appointment with them and review what is available to you um, as internal or external loans. We're quite a, a small university. Sometimes we don't have as much funding as other, but we often find a little, a little dollars here and there to help you out with this. And I'll look at the chat if we have more questions, but really thank you for joining us. I always like to conclude with that picture of the peacock. We have so many peacocks on campus. So it's kind of, again, railroad signature. So I hope you'll visit us and see them. And if okay, so question from the chat. Um, what electives, volunteer, or work experience would you recommend before starting the program at Royal Roads? Um, 
assuming that your associate science uh, degree transfers in and there's not anything specifically listed for courses, um, really do something that you're going to enjoy. Um, work experience is not really, a, not necessarily a prerequisite for, for coming into the program unless you uh, are in flexible admission uh, standpoint and then volunteering or work experience might be useful. Um, so I know, I know that's not really a specific answer to your, your question, but um, yeah, it's, it's really hard to say because it sort of depends on, on what, what you're interested in. Another uh, question I see, Mickey, is uh, how many people will be per group uh, for the on-campus project? Uh, generally, the on-campus projects are done as groups of four and five. Okay. Uh, that's a question. Do we work with WES at all? Uh, I'm afraid I don't know what WES is off the top of my head. I believe it has to see with international transcripts. So let me find out on the uh, website. I believe so that we have worked with them, but I'll just double check and maybe Andrea already answered that one. I'm just looking here. And if, if we don't know, we'll just email you after the session. Yeah. Um, uh, World Education Services for International Students. Perfect. Uh, Andrea might know, but I, I'm afraid I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, I'll find the link. Thank you. So we get international students, I think, making your program. Uh, a few. Yep. Yeah. Any other oh. questions or things people really, really want to know? Mm. I think someone is asking about doing our program at Camosun uh, 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 and transferring and wondering what elective vol volunteering or work experience would you recommend before starting railroads? Uh, unless there's something specific listed as part of the transfer agreement for that program. Um, and so I would say definitely check that because the associate's degree does have a fair amount of variability in what you can take. Um, I don't know that there's anything specific, but the transfer agreement may specifically mention something. Uh, wondering if there are any co-op opportunities in the program. Not not in the program per se, uh, although you will qualify for some co-op opportunities and co-op funding that Eco Canada makes available um, to graduates of certified programs. So that's, that'll be something to, to explore as you're getting close to the end of the program. Anything else? Anything we missed? Not see any more question no. And again, we'll share the recording with all of you, all the links, share, and feel free to email learn.more. Uh, they can put you in touch with myself or Mickey if they need additional uh, information. And we look forward to welcoming you maybe on campus, uh, fully on campus or blended on campus. And thank you so much, Mickey, for your time. I know you were teaching this morning, so I really appreciate you ran from your classroom to <laughs> the webinar. <laughs> No worries. Um, folks, if if what ha always happens to me happens to you, and as soon as this hangs up, you think, oh, no, I should have asked, uh, definitely send email to the, the Learn More uh, address, and Andrea will be, be there checking for uh, providing more information. And if she doesn't know the answer, she will definitely flip it across to somebody who does. So, Fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.